humbled and honored. I want to thank the jury for selecting me. I know that that's a conventional thing to do, but it was easier for them to think the our other awardees. But when it comes to select an entrepreneur from the IIT alum and from Indian origin, sure it was very difficult. So I feel especially privileged. I feel I want to thank Pan IIT organization for creating this, thanking Government of India for creating IIT. I would also like to thank IIT Kharagpur, which is celebrating its 60th year, for taking an adolescent and converting me into an adult. Some people may still question that. I really accept this honor on behalf of all the mentors, my professors, the guides, and particularly all my colleagues past and present, and the employees of my group. This really award really belongs to them. As Shankar Netra, the person also said, it's not one person's job to be an entrepreneur. Now my entrepreneurship journey actually started in IIT Kharagpur. I became the General Secretary of the Mechanical Engineering Department and found there was a magazine called The Design and it wasn't published for a couple of years. So I looked around why, because there was no advertisement rupees to pay for the printing cost. So I went around door to door selling advertisement. I remember going to a company called McNeil & Berry which used to make gears. And I asked for an advertisement, they said, why? So I had to come up with an answer. I said, well, there will be an article in this about new methods of gear design. I went back to the uh, college. I convinced a professor to write an article on new methods of gear design. So to cut the long story short, that was my first media venture. We actually realized a surplus and I learned how to turn around a media company, how to run a one-man virtual company, and how to get help actually from lots of people. So thank you IIT for giving me the first taste of business venture or social venture, but really it's all about finding an opportunity. After Berkeley, and then I worked at Stanford Research Institute and McKinsey, this entrepreneurial bug in me came back. And so in 1984, I tried to acquire a small switching company switching systems from mainframe computers. But I didn't have any money. Consultants didn't in those days make so much money. So I managed to find a partner on the Wall Street, this very famous man now, but he was not that famous at that time. And his name is George Soros. He backed me. And it so happens, I managed to get 100% of the financing from the banks, because those days, that leverage buyout was coming into work. But what happened in this process is I found a financial partner for my crazy ideas. So he and I, over time, funded about 40 to 50 different kinds of ventures. Some of you are probably here and got the benefit of the money or the advice. Uh, but in this process, I learned how to work with great entrepreneurs, what great entrepreneurs do. I know I see Raj Singh sitting there. I learned a lot from him. I 
don't see too many others at this point, but it allowed me also to go into different parts of the world to make investment, whether it's Mexico, Russia, and I still have an investment in China. The, as we are making money and building businesses, it was the desire to do something and engage in India becoming, started becoming very intense. So in 1994, I was invited by the then Chief Minister of the Bengal Government, Sri Jyoti Basu, and for those who do not know, it's a communist government, and they had a project called Haldia Petrochemicals. And he said, look, the Goenkas have dropped out, the Tatas have dropped out, uh, I know you are doing something, uh, can you help out? So I convinced my partner that, look, let's take a chance, this is not our business, we never do green field projects. And we managed, we got that thing started. It was a thousand acre of land with cows grazing on it. I can tell you, uh, it hasn't been an easy path, but we finished the project in four years. It's, and the good thing about this petrochemical business is it was a mother cracker, it produces lots of different kinds of products, but over the last 10 years, it has created 760 new enterprises and that employs just in Bengal 2.4 lakhs, that is 240,000 people. So we haven't made any money from it yet, but I think, and some of my friends who have invested with me are still probably cursing me, so doing what are you doing here? But uh, uh, it is a both a joy and also a source of pain when I think about that experience. But I am glad I did it during this time period. Of course, I since I was spending almost every month over there, every other month, I started doing other things. So we have a very interesting uh, life sciences company which does drug discovery work. Uh, we have software companies and real estate and so on and so forth. I won't bore you with all those. It came a time, it also gave me an opportunity to create, help create the Indian School of Business. Uh, that became a very interesting, very good institution, academic institution. Also helped me create an entity called I create. I create is I create jobs as opposed to look for jobs. I came from a middle class Bengali background. We always grew up thinking of, okay, I'll graduate and I'll look for a job. So entrepreneurship was not part of our heritage. So I create today has, is actually also a pan-IT partner organization created about a thousand entrepreneurs, employing five to 20 people in each of these places. So this kind of activity, I sort of migrated, as you can see, you know, going from one thing to another, is now today helps me to think about how to create new business models and how to help new businesses being built and inspire them. I have one request to you and it was brought up by our first awardee. Recently, I was in China. Now, you think about the today's global problem. There's 300 million Chinese labor has moved into from the rural to the urban. And that is almost as many as labor that the entire Western world had. US, Europe, and Japan together. So we doubled the number of labor force. We haven't doubled the number of consumers. Now, India is going to have another 300 million labor. The problem is, if this wage premium pool for the Indian laborers, we are coming in late, if we cannot create technology and provide value-added products, we will not be able to actually get this labor pool to be earning a decent living. So, India doesn't lack entrepreneurs. 
So entrepreneurial engine in India is working. What's not working in India is an innovation engine. And in the new world, these two things have to come together. And the IITs and IIT alums in particular can help bridge this gap for the future of the Indian labor. So my request to you, all of you can help in different ways. I know some of you are helping the IITs becoming a better innovation engine and some of you can create a better products. And I think with the value system that we share between the US and India, this will be a very strong win-win proposition between the two countries and we can help the global workforce both in US as well as in India. Thank you very much.